This is our second session on Galatians 3, 6-9, and I simply want to focus on this tremendously important phrase, Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him, counted to him as righteousness. What does that mean? What does it mean that his faith, it would be referring to his faith, his believing, it was counted to him as righteousness. Father, few things are more important than that we be counted, treated as righteous, acceptable, pure, in your sight. You are a holy God, and you have undertaken to count sinners who believe as righteous in your sight. Teach us what this means here, and grant us to live in it, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Abraham believed God. That's a quote from Genesis 15. Behold, the word of the Lord came to him. This man, Ishmael, your son by Hagar, that is by the flesh, shall not be your heir. Your very own son shall be your heir, even though you're too old to have children and your wife is barren and aged. So this child is going to be a child of miracle, a child of promise, a child that's impossible apart from believing God to do it. And he brought him outside and said, Look toward the heaven and number the stars, if you are able to number them. And then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. In other words, this is crazy impossible. Thousands and thousands of people coming from Abraham, who is too old to have a baby, too old to conceive a baby in Sarah's womb. And he believed, he believed the Lord. And he counted it to him as righteousness. What does that mean? Two possibilities. Let me just mention one. I mean two. Faith is is the same as an act of right doing or righteousness. He counted it. He counted his faith as righteousness, because it was an act of righteousness. That's the way we use the term counting, both in the first century and today. You gave me a dollar, I will count it as a dollar and put it in your account. Dollar for dollar. Here's the other possibility. Faith is counted as rights in the sense that faith is an act of receiving, receiving the gift of righteousness. That's the one Paul intends, let me show you how we can know that, the most decisive and important set of verses on this issue of righteousness in relation to faith is Romans 4, 4, and 5. Now, to the one who works, his wages, so works earn wages, his wages are not counted as a gift, but as his due. That's what I meant back here when I said dollar for dollar. You give me a dollar, I'll count it as a dollar. You do an act of faith, I'll count it as righteousness, because it is righteousness. You're doing the right thing. This is turning faith into a work when you think that way. So now, to the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift, but as is due. And to the one who does not work, 
but who believes over against work in him who justifies, declares righteous, counts as righteous, the ungodly. So the believing is done by an ungodly person. We were not good enough to be counted righteous by virtue of things in ourselves. Our faith is counted as righteousness. But the faith here is not a performance. It's not in the category of works. It's not in the category of earning wages. It's in the category of receiving a gift. So faith is the unique act of the soul by which the soul receives a gift. Faith, as the old theologians used to say, is a receiving grace. Work performs, offers the performance to God, expects some due from it. Faith does not perform It stops performing, recognizes the hopelessness of ungodliness, and looks away from itself to receive the gift of righteousness. Now let's confirm that idea in a few other places. So here we are back at Galatians. And in the previous section, remember, chapter 3, verse 2, let me ask you only this. Did you receive? The Spirit, by works of law, no, or by hearing with faith. Faith is the instrument by which we receive the Spirit, or we receive Christ, who comes and dwells in us by His Spirit. Faith is a receiving grace, and the fundamental thing that we receive, not a thing, a person, is Christ and all that God is for us in him as he comes to us in his spirit. John put it like this in John 1.11, Jesus came to his own and his own did not receive him, but to all who did receive him, comma, who believed in his name, comma, he gave the right to become children of God. So, Believing in Christ is synonymous with receiving Christ. John makes it very clear. Believing is a receiving grace. We look away from ourselves to the Savior, to the Lord, to the treasure, Jesus Christ, and we welcome him into our lives. We trust him. We receive him in a trusting, treasuring way. And that means we receive righteousness. Here's Philippians. For Christ's sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ, gain Christ, and be found in him. How can I be found in him? Not having a righteousness of my own. No. I want to be found in him, united to him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from law, law law-keeping. I can try to build up my own righteousness through law-keeping, or I can be united to Christ and have a righteousness not my own. And here it's said a different way. But that which comes through faith in Christ. So faith in Christ leads to union with Christ, which leads to a righteousness not my own, but that righteousness which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God. So it's God's righteousness, but it's in him. So we speak of it as Christ's righteousness as well, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. So when faith welcomes Christ, what we receive in Christ is God's righteousness. Or one more text, Romans 10, being ignorant of the righteousness of God, which comes that way, that we just saw, 
and seeking to establish their own. That's what Paul was trying to do for years till he met Christ. They did not submit to God's righteousness, which is a gift and must be received by faith. For the goal, or sometimes translated end, means both. The telos, the goal of the law, is Christ for righteousness to everyone who believes. So what does it mean then that Abraham believed God? Now the focus in this text is not on Christ explicitly. He's not mentioned in this text. But we know from all that's gone before, just a few verses to show it, that Christ is the focus. A person is not justified by works of the law, but by faith in Christ, he said in verse 16. And then in verse 20, Paul says, The life I live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. So there's no doubt that faith in Christ is in view here, but he's talking about Abraham. Abraham did not know Christ directly, and so he's really talking more directly about the principle of faith throughout this whole section, and he'll show how Abraham relates more specifically to Christ in the coming verses. But the meaning here so far is counted as righteous doesn't mean he looked at the faith and said, oh, dollar for dollar, that's your righteousness. You've done well. You've performed well today. You've believed in me. Believing in me is a beautiful good work, and I credit your good work to your account and count you as righteous. That's not the meaning. The meaning is that this believing here is an act of receiving. And what it receives is God, his word for Abraham, the absolutely trustworthy God and all of his provision for his forgiveness. And we know the gift to be Jesus Christ in whom we have the righteousness of God.